Hi, welcome to Patrick's Tech Show. I'm Patrick John. We're outside today with a beautiful 95 Jeep Wrangler YJ. When you try to start it, the engine rotates but doesn't start. I tried checking the battery, changing the spark plugs, the distributor cap, the distributor cap cables, the ignition coil, the fuel filter, and the crankshaft position sensor. And after all that, nothing changed. And then I noticed some interesting clues. If I leave it in the start position, the starter relay and fuel pump relay are clicking continuously. And then, if I have it there for a while, put it to the off position, and then try again, I don't hear them. And I bet if I try to start it, it'll work this time. So what could be affecting the starter relay and the fuel pump relay? I know, so I'm going to tell you. It's the engine computer, also known as the powertrain control module. PCM for all you cool cats. It is in the housing behind the washer fluid. First, you'll have to use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the washer housing. Then I'm gonna use a socket wrench to remove these two bolts on top. I'm using a 5 16th socket. And there's one last bolt on the bottom right of the housing on a lip that's just out of sight. And you still can't get the computer housing out because of this cable going to this connector. So you use the same socket wrench and just get that bolt out of there. Freedom. You could order a new one online for $300. The fact that it starts up after the switch is on the on position for a while tells me that the capacitors are going bad and need longer to charge up. Well, if that's the case, you can just buy new capacitors for a couple of dollars. Let's take it to the shop and see what we can do. It's a little tricky to get the cover off because these tabs are holding it in place. So just push them in with a screwdriver and you can pop the cover out. In my opinion, it's a little easier as you work your way around to get the screwdriver in that crevice and use it like a crowbar. Oh my God. So the circuit board is covered in this waterproof material. We're gonna have to use a utility knife and cut around the edges to pop this board out. Now I'm just gonna use something to get under that circuit board and pop it up. Remove the coating from under the capacitors. Now let's beam in the soldering iron and get those capacitors out. I personally like using solder wick to get solder out. I'm accidentally burning this waterproof stuff and it smells like old fish. Now let's pull out the capacitors. It's important to note that the striped negative end goes into the circular hole and the positive end goes into the square hole. So I ordered three 220 microfarad 25 volt electrolytic capacitors. I don't know about you, but I think it's time to take a little break and have a snack. And today's snack 
is smoked oysters. And that was Pampas Smoked Oysters and Sunflower Oil, distributed by Transnational Foods in Miami, Florida. Okay, so the new capacitors are here. Remember the negative striped end goes in that circular hole. And the non-striped positive end goes in the square hole. Apply the solder to the leads. <laughs> Cut off the excess length. And I think it would be a good idea to put something non-conductive and waterproof over top of those leads that we exposed. So I'm using liquid tape. Okay, let's put this back together. And take it to the Jeep. Okay, let's put it back together. First, we're gonna put the cable on with the bolt. And then we're gonna mount the box back in with the bolts. Put the washer fluid back in. Put your screw back in for your washer housing. And now for the moment of truth. Oh. Wow. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And now that I got done working on a Jeep, I feel like a bad boy and I want to do some bike tricks. Look, I'm no hands. <laughs>